the company took a stance uh, probably about 18 months ago to really review the amount of landfill we would create to try and um, completely eliminate landfill or non-recyclable material from our sites. Um, and that time we ended up finding out that there was a handful of products out there that we were using that were not recyclable. Um, and obviously one of the boards used on the facades were one of them. Um, and so we decided to get into a bit more research. WeatherText was put forward to us through a merchant. In discussing the product with WeatherText, I guess what we found was the manufacturing side of things was, uh, it was a very simple process. Um, and in that simple process produced a product that was 100% recyclable. And from that we actually looked at how simple the product was to install on our, on our walls um, and at the same time realised the cost competitiveness of the product. Um, and so from that point onwards we had decided to uh, specify the WeatherTex product on our Sunshine project. Timber was one of the, the, the very first things we considered including because we were looking for a, a softer, um, more natural finish on the buildings. Um, often what we find if we're using too much render and, and face brick and the like, we end up with a, almost a plastic a, a, a facade outcome. So we're looking for a really natural outcome with a little bit of, a little bit of tactile finish, something that had a bit of texture and a bit of depth to it. We, initially looked at natural timbers to achieve the outcome we were after uh, and we go through a whole process of considering installation but also ongoing maintenance for people at the other end so that our, our purchasers tend to rely on us for quite some time to guide them through the maintenance issues that they might have um, and in part there's the usual problems with uh, for example clear coating natural timbers um, and the surface breaking down or the, the paints breaking down over a short period, um, but we're also really concerned about movement of the board, of individual boards, of cupping and splitting and so forth that can happen, particularly on the western sides of these buildings and rotting on the southern sides. Uh, so we looked at a variety of different products. It was the one product that was stable. Um, it was easy to install, uh, and the and one of the big things for us um, was that it's a sustainable product. It's made from waste and. Uh, what's left over at the end, we mulch and put it into our garden beds around our buildings. It's simple, especially with the guys that use it on site here, wall solutions and that. I mean, it's like I say, in terms of lightweight and being able to deliver it, it's not no issue, and especially times also. Getting the product here, yeah, no issues with that sort of thing. You can use one guy to install something like this, like it is very lightweight, with it only being, like I say, it's only a 10mm product, so it's, um, it's some of the, the products you can get at 18mm, especially the 5 cement stuff can be very heavy. Um, one guy can certainly do it by himself, but it's probably easier if it is done with two though, and especially in certain stances with this, you're off scaffolding that, but um, yeah, like I said, very lightweight, so very easy to use. And with the flashing detail and everything, especially with around the windows and that, very simple. All it does is touch, touch in behind the reveal. Uh, flashing is used above the headers and that, very simple, very simple to cut. Um, yeah, it's, in terms of application, yeah, it's a very simple product to use. Um, this was really just a very straightforward process of simple product to install. Um, it's light, so we didn't have material handling issues, uh, which we often have with, particularly again with cement based products. Um, so this was light, one man can handle a sheet. Um, it's nailed with a, with a, um, a normal nail gun. Um, there really wasn't much to it. It's actually easier for the chaps who are doing it than fibre cement because it's lighter and, and, and all their work is nearly all second story work. So getting it up near scaffolds is, is a lot easier. Uh, it's uh, easy to cut, you can use a normal blade rather than have to have specialised blades. And uh, it's, uh, so basically the, the, the installers like it better than fibre cement. Yeah. That corner one behind me now would take, that corner section would take a, a crew about four to five days to get it top of the Because on this particular one we're battening it as well. Which normally, sometimes you can put it direct to frame and other times you batten it. So. A battening gives you, it's, it's straightens it, so you straighten the frame at the same time. So you're straight, putting it on so you get it nice and straight, like I was showing with that chap around the corner, who's trying to get it nice and straight. And uh, also then it also gives you another insulation value because air in between gives you another rating, increases your rating as well on your insulation. So. Some of the, the issues we've had with, with other claddings in the past have been associated with the ability to reverse the product. So, weather text you can rotate it, you, you can literally minimise your waste in your product which brings the cost down, um, but it also, um, the installation process is quite simple. 
other products you need to back block, um, nail at closer centres and so forth. From a maintenance perspective it was fantastic, it actually exceeded their expectations and really allayed a lot of the concerns that the maintenance people had about the use of um, natural timbers period. There really wasn't much to it. It's quite simple and very easy.